Welcome everyone. My name is Deb Siegeloff and I am so pleased to welcome you to the Jewish Community Relations Council of the United Jewish Federation of Tidewater, Simon Family JCC, Embassy of Israel and Community Partners 10th Annual Israel Today series. Tonight is the beginning of our series with, with the Israel Story podcast in conversation with friends. If our Israel Story hosts look familiar, you might have seen them when they came to Tidewater two years ago to help us celebrate Israel at 70. Israel Story boasts listeners from 194 countries and has upwards of 2 million downloads a year, bringing you extraordinary tales of ordinary Israelis. Although tonight's star is anything but ordinary, he brings a real spice to life. We are honored to bring you Chef Eli Bully, executive chef of the New York City Upper West Side hotspot restaurant, Bustan. Chef Bully moved from Georgia to Chalon, Israel at the age of three. He served in the Israeli army as a cook in the combat engineer unit at the age of 18. And it was there that he realized that that is what he wanted to do for the rest of his life. Chef Bully got a job after his tenure in the army at Kali's, one of the most highly regarded restaurant in Israel where he cooked for politicians, ambassadors, and presidents. His drive to learn from the best brought him to the famous Herbert Samuel restaurant in Tel Aviv. And here he went from being the line cook to sous chef in just six months. That really wasn't the most important thing that happened for him there because that is where he met his current sweetheart, the soon to be pastry chef, Sheer Rosenblatt. So it was in early 2017 that Ailey and Sheer were enticed to come to America to work at the Paper Factory Hotel in Long Island City. The pair created an exceptional Israeli focused restaurant in addition to an outstanding banquet experience for special events. And the word traveled fast and restauranteur Tuvia Feldman quickly snatched the two and hired them to join his team at Bustan as the executive chef and pastry chef. Tonight in the kitchen with Chef Bouli is Israel Stories' Yochai Maital. Yochai is a co-founder and senior producer of Israel Story podcast and radio show. His work is on the seam of journalism and art. He spends his days combing Israel and the world for stories and then discovering how best to tell them. He is passionate about bringing the tales that reveal the less talked about sides of Israel, the real Israel, and is driven by the belief that experiencing life through another's eyes is an essential part of creating and understanding a compassionate society. Yochai currently lives in New York with his wife Daphna and three kids, but he says he wakes up every morning dreaming of Tel Aviv, and I want to tell you, so do I, so do I. Thank you both for joining our community this evening and being with us. Before I turn it over, I just want to add on a personal note that Bustan Restaurant is an Israeli oasis in New York City. I ate at Bustan shortly after it opened and it quickly became my most favorite place in the city, as well as my most favorite. Oh, you're going to New York, you want a suggestion? Bustan, Upper West Side, and if you sit in the garden in the back, you will really think you're in Israel. It's an unbelievable experience. Throughout the program tonight, please feel free to submit your questions through the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen in the chat. Yochai will do his best to get to them throughout the evening as we are cooking together. So without further ado, and a bete avon, I give you Yochai and Chef Bouli. Hey everybody, um, we're so excited to be here with you. Wow. Um, 
honestly, I mean, I, first of all, everybody in Tidewater and Virginia Beach and wherever, whoever, wherever you may be uh, joining us here virtually, I really, we really miss, uh, you know, being over and actually meeting people. Um, but at least, uh, you know, this gives us a chance to do some unusual things. And um, I think one of, the, one of the perks of working on Israel Story has always been just getting to meet new people and really interesting and great people and often becoming friends with them. And I can already feel like this is going to happen with Eli. So we just met a few weeks ago, you know, thinking about this event. And it was just so fun meeting with them over socially distanced outdoor coffees and uh, thinking about what to do here and hearing his story. And Eli really has an amazing, Israel sto amazing Israeli story. And um, yeah, but I think we're, we're going to talk about a lot of stuff. And please feel free to sort of chat. And I'll, try, I'll do my best to juggle everything here. But I think we're going to like go right into cooking, right? Right, let's go yeah. to cooking. So first of all, I want to yeah. say hi. <laughs> and uh, any question you have, please feel comfortable to comment to me on my Instagram to ask right here. My Instagram is elibully12. We're gonna start to cook and let's have fun because that's the most important on the food. Yes, food. So let's start. Okay. So we're gonna do today, tonight, two recipes with eggplant. So the first thing, we're gonna take an eggplant and we're gonna put it on open fire. You see, I hope you guys all have uh, got the recipes and um, and stuff prepared. Right. So okay. we're gonna chow the eggplant about seven minutes on each side. And on the same time, we're gonna start to work on the other recipe as well. So the eggplant on the fire is for the baba ganoush. And this yeah. eggplant is gonna be for the sabir. Really, sometimes people are worried about charring the eggplant on the fire, is it? Why they are worrying? I don't know, it makes a mess. It makes a mess. Yeah. So we always can uh, wrap around with the aluminum foil. Yeah. And this mass, this mess is result of beautiful flavor of child and smoke mess. It's and worth it, the mess, you say. For me, anytime, <laughs> a day, even on the night, and even if after my wife gonna give me half time, it's worth it. Okay. So okay. there is another eggplant. I'm half peel it, not really peel it. Yeah. And after that, I'm cutting it on big cubes. And this eggplant gonna be for our sabir recipe. Charlie, you want to come to show them? Yeah, you want to show the, the cubes. So it's really a big, nice chunk of cubes of eggplant. When we choose an eggplant, we're trying to get eggplant with no very, no, no, without a lot of seeds. We're trying to find the light one and not heavy. It's very important because these seeds make the flavor a little bit bitter and itchy and uh, we don't want it. So after we cut our eggplant to the big cubes, we salted the eggplant. We salt it with... Uh, with kosher. regular kosher salt, we uh -huh. mix it and we let it sit for about 10 minutes and we're gonna get a little bit juice out from the eggplant and it's gonna be... 10 minutes? But yeah. you can. If, if yeah. you can do it hours before, it's gonna be even better. We have one that we make like half an hour ago. Yeah. And as you can see, this juice coming out from the eggplant, we don't want it. No. So, so yeah, so let it okay. sit with the salt and the juice gonna come out. It's gonna be beautiful. Okay. So. Let's go back to the eggplant that we put on the fire. This eggplant, we just leave it on the fire. We don't touch it, we don't move it. We let it sit for seven minutes, and just after that, we're gonna flip it. Okay. Uh, we have one that we made from before. I'm yeah, gonna show we'll you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We, 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 you want to make it in the, until the end? Then? Yeah, seven, so it's gonna be 15 minutes about. Right, right. Exactly. right. Okay. So, so, so maybe, right. maybe let's do a quick overview of what we're making today. Okay. We're making, so, mm -hmm. we make it uh, today. Two eggplant dishes. Two eggplant dishes. One yeah. of them is baba ganoush, which uh, I, I believe most of you know what is it. It's a uh, eggplant puree mixed with some tahini, some onion. We're gonna sprinkle it with some sumac and olive oil on the top. Mm -hmm. We have a beautiful smoke flavor that coming from the over the fire that yeah. you say making mess uh -huh. and the yeah. second one it's sabich sabich it's a traditionally iraqi and a dish that came for, to israel in a, right. in very nice way yeah. the, the, the iraqi religion people they cannot have nothing cooked on saturday morning so they have the half boiled egg on the platter on yeah. friday 
we have this fried eggplant. You want to fry it. So this is actually a dish you can like prepare and put in the fridge and right. make later. Right, right, right. Yeah. You need half boiled egg, you need some fried eggplant yeah. and flesh helps around and that's it. You keep up and yeah. you good. Uh, so yes, that's the decision we're gonna make today. And uh, for me, it's very Israeli. But maybe I wanted to start with a okay. question for you. Yes, right. Just this very light and sort of non-political question to get us started here. Okay. But like, what is Israeli food? What is Israeli food? That's a is very that nice food? question because I had it once. And yeah. one of my guests asked me what is Israeli food for me. This is I, an Israeli Mediterranean restaurant, right? Right. Yeah. So one of the guests come to me one evening and asked me, what is Israeli food? Israeli is so young country. What, what, what is Israeli food? So I explained to him on my feeling Israeli food, uh, mm -hmm. as we mentioned before, I come to Israel from Georgia when I was three years old and I go to Poulon in a high building with eight floors. <laughs> and I always remember when I was walking on the building, each floor I used to smell different flavor of food, different uh -huh. smells of food. Yeah. One flavor, one flow, it can be Ethiopian food, and one flow, it can be Yemeni food, and one flow can be Russian food. And for me, Israeli food, it's to take all this culture, mix it together, and to make the food without rules, and just with focus on freshness and tastiness. That's for me the Israeli food. So really, you could do anything, anything almost. Almost, yes, yeah. with French ingredients and uh -huh. uh, yeah, wow. with the Israeli impact, yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah, so uh, how are we doing on the uh, on the yeah. eggplant? This yeah. eggplant, I need a few more minutes. We want okay. very, very child, like, like here we have, yeah. and on the same time, we have to get a little bit softer. So if you're right. taking a few more minutes, and you're afraid to don't touch it too much. Uh, I, I can show you on the same time how we're gonna peel this eggplant, okay, sure. Maybe while they're doing it, Deb, Deb mentioned uh, that you got into cooking through the army, right? Right. Um, how was that for you? Did you did you want to go to the army? Is that like, are you? So, how did you get into cooking? So that's a very Give nice a, question. Yeah. Uh, in the beginning, I really don't think about to be cook on the army. Yeah. And on some points, I understand that cooking can give me the opportunity to walk a week out of the army, yeah. a week on the army. Right, so for those and who, I find first of all, we have, we have a request to slow down. So we will slow down a little okay. bit for everybody to catch up. Don't worry. And I'll just, uh, yeah, so what what uh, Eddie's talking about is all the, you guys might know this, but all the cooks in the Israeli army, I don't even know why this is. It's so random, it's so weird. I'm gonna explain you why, okay. because the job is so hard. Because the you, job is so hard. Right. So all the cooks in the IDF have a week on, a week off. They have a week off right. completely, which is very unusual for a soldier, of course. Because it's, it's very, so hard, you're saying. Because it's so hard. You start right. your morning at 6 o'clock a.m. and you finish at 11. So think about it. You have one hour to take a shower, sleep six hours, and come back to the kitchen. Wow. It's very, very tough, and that's why we're doing week yes, week no. Mm -hmm. And first of all, I found it like my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And second, it gave me the opportunity to work and help home with the, some... Uh, so you needed to work to bring money home. Right, right. It was, uh, it was, yeah, it was power back then. When did you start working? On the kitchen? In general. In, in general, wow. I started very early, mm -hmm. on my 12 years old. 12 years old, right. you were working? Yes, I started wow. working grocery and doing delivery on bicycle. Yeah. And I found it very nice to be with the... You can say in Hebrew, by the way, but now I'll help my opinion. Independence? Independence. Independence. And to have a, the, the money that you need to spend, and if you need to help with some money, to have the opportunity to do it. Yeah. And I, I love it. I love to work. I love to... Wow. Mm -hmm. So so sometimes it's even to me it sounds too healthy, like twelve years old, but you're doing it you think well. it's good? I I, I think for me, yeah. for me it's 
meet in Atlanta. So you only got into food when you, when you, when you were in the army, so the forced you into it? Uh, yes. I, I wasn't one of the chefs who starts from the grandma kitchen. Yeah. For me, it starts from the army. The first fish I have eaten it was on the army because before that, I don't really like fish. Uh -huh. And all the flavors and all, all, all these things, it's things that I make to myself in the army, and that's how I start to like it. And I start to love the, the feedback that I'm getting and the reaction of the people. Yeah. Okay, so you just turned around the eggplant, yes. right? And Another... as you can see, it's very soft and it's getting good shot. So, so we had a question here about how can you uh, cook an eggplant on a stove that uh, if somebody doesn't have this type of stove. It's like a... Professional so, it's not range. professional, it's gas. Mm -hmm. If we don't have gas, we can make it on the oven, but you yeah. have to remember that we're not going to get the smokeness of the fire. Right. But we definitely can do the same thing on the oven to take the airplane, to put it on the oven for 29 minutes, and it's going to get in the oven. In right. The, in the, like if you have a grill, right? It's better than like the grill oven. On the grill, yeah. it's the best. If mm -hmm. you have a chocolate, it's the best. Okay. And, uh, and it's last mess, like you say in the beginning. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, I, I feel already the one, it was so easy when it's hot, it's coming and the head point keep the, the white, beautiful color. Yeah. And, and it's smoky. And mm -hmm. We have a dish on the restaurant, if we're gonna have time in the end, I'm gonna make it with you. It's called Hector Carpaccio. Uh -huh. And when people eat it, they say, it's feel like the Israeli caviar because it's smoky. And the way we... Oh, we, we have we like, like a bonus here. If, we, right. if we're gonna get to that, yes. Okay, yeah, sure, okay. why not? That's why I'm trying to, 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 to go fast. And yeah, yeah, but we'll... we'll, we'll wait, 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 wait. Yeah, we'll try and uh, also keep up with that so everybody can keep up and whoever's trying to cook along can cook okay. along. Okay. All right, so what, where are we now? We're... So mm -hmm. now we, with the F point that we make chug, we're gonna chop it now. Okay. We want less uh, juice we can, so we're just gonna take it. We're gonna chop it. All right. So for everybody back home, we this is an eggplant. If, if your eggplant's not ready, yet, it's okay. Yeah. yeah. Eggplant that Eddie put on the fire is still not ready. This is one that he prepared in advance. He's just chopping it. Just chopping after, it. After after peeling it, and it really after did it. come off very easily. Yes, it has to be very soft, yeah. like you see it here. It's all about the time to be patient, to put it on the fire. I'm saying, I, I was saying seven minutes, but you know, everyone have different stove. So we just gonna need to get it soft. We can really and soft and charred. Right. Soft and charred. Yes. Okay. So we're gonna start with the baba ganoush. We and have some nice eggs for the sabich. We're gonna put them also already on the fire. Right, so organic, nice. You mean just cooking hard boiled eggs? Hard boiled eggs, but we put it five minutes because we want them a little bit soft inside. Okay, so this is just a uh, it's for the preparation sabich. for the next dish is making a hard making hard boiled eggs that are perfectly cooked. Or like yeah, soft boiled eggs, or would you soft say? Boiled egg, yes. Soft boiled eggs. In the time okay. you're getting the boil point, you go in five minutes and you take it out of the ice boiler. Right. And that's it. So five minute timer, <laughs> the minute the water starts to boil. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Baba ganoush. Baba ganoush. So we have the eggplant. We add to the eggplant one nice spoon of tahini. One spoon of tahini. To add some red chopped onion. Okay. Some salt. Some fresh squeezed lemon juice. Okay. Mix all of this together. Yes, we make sure we put enough salt and we like it. Sandra, we'll, we'll try to keep it less shaky. We're doing our best we can. Okay. Yeah. 
little bit more salt. When we cook, mm -hmm. we always have to try to make sure we like the flavor. Yeah. If there is anything we're missing, we always can add. So easy. Is this for the next uh, dishes? No, no, that's for you. I want you to try the bubble. Oh, the okay, okay. Time we are here and Maybe while you're putting together the baba ganoush, I can ask you, Eric, tell us a little bit about your background. Where you weren't born in Israel. No, I am born in Georgia. Mm -hmm. And when I was three years old, my family... Wait, so, wait, wait, sorry, I asked you a question, but first just tell us what you're doing here. So, this is uh, olive oil and... Sumac. And sumac. Yes, ground sumac from Turkey, it's very nice, very... What is sumac? You know, I've always... Wonder, so what, it's what kind of berry. Exactly? This one it's a berry, like, actually? It's kind of berry. It looks like a berry. You yeah. even I even saw it one time on the highway in New York. It was in the On the highway in New York? Yeah. Just growing on the side? Just growing, right. Wow. It's so beautiful. So uh -huh. this one is kind of from Turkish, it's giving a little bit of acidity and nice flavor. Uh huh. Okay. I'm gonna get for you the pita and I want you to try it. Okay. Because for me this baba ganoush it's mean a lot. It's, uh, as I said before, it's so grand, it's so creamy, it's so... Here we have something. I'm so else. excited right now. Wow. Oh. So wait, I want to tell them about your trick with the steaming the pita. Oh yeah. Because this pita feels like it just came out of the... like It's completely fresh, but it's kind of a trick. It's kind of a trick, yes. Yeah. Uh, we take Ooh. the pita and we steam it. And we, we, we like it moist and... I love it like that. That's that's why I'm doing that. So yeah. So the um, it's nothing good. Mori, Mori, the white stuff was not mayo. It was tahini. Tahini. Yeah. Tahini. It was right. tahini that mixed with water. Very basic. Very simple. Yeah. And let's mm -hmm. try it. Let's let's tell me what you think. Okay. Yeah. Not comfortable. Oh wow. It's nice, right? Smokiness and so easy to make, yeah? That was like three seconds. Well, while we let some people, how are you guys doing? We can feel free to leave us comments on how you guys are doing there and if you want us to slow down or speed up or whatever. In the meantime, maybe tell me a little bit about the, uh, well, tell me about how the, it was to move to Israel. Living Abkhazia, right? Yeah, yeah. How it was to live in Abkhazia. So and from to Abkhazia, Abkhazia, yeah. So Abkhazia, the memory I have today, it's only the pictures that my parents showing to me. So I'll just tell you guys at home, Abkhazia, for, for those who don't know, so Abkhazia is a certain area in Georgia that's uh, contested. And so there's a war there between um, the Russian government in Georgia and... Uh, Chechnya. Right. And, and mm -hmm. it was a big, uh, big war, and uh, it's making my parents to live the house and all what they have, mm. and to move with the two small uh, kids. Babies. You were Babies. Like a, you were, how old were you? Three years old. And Three my old. older sister, she was four. So it, it was very challenging for them to go to Israel, which they've been before, but they never thought like we, we were going to need to move mm. and so fast. So the Ibu, it wasn't that good. And it was, yeah. it was very challenging for them to to come to Israel in the morning time to be in the Ulpan, yeah. where you learning Hebrew, and in the evening time to be at work for to make some uh, bread and butter for your family. So I'm going back one second to the eggplant. Um, as you see, as you can Eddie, see, Eddie, just a quick question. Yes. Um, yeah, you want to show them? I want to show that it's so soft. You see, I'm pushing it. Mm -hmm. and it's so soft. We 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 losing all the water in the time that we chopping it. And yeah. That, that's the point. We want to use the to lose the water. We want to get the few good flavor of the eggplant. Yeah. And that's it. We, we move it. We we try to peel as best we can. Best we, we, we can. That we don't want to have. We don't want to burn ourselves. But best we can. And the eggplant gonna keep bright and beautiful. So peeling it, your trick is just to do it as quickly as you can quickly in terms of can. the heat. To keep this beautiful color. Yeah. And and. Actually, you can put some gloves and do it so easy. It's not with gloves like you did before. Yeah, mm -hmm. just like we did before. Yeah. And and as we see before, it's so easy to it's make amazing. this baba ganoush at it's home. It's very amazing. 
few seconds. You need a spoon of red onion and some tahini. So people are asking you about the amounts. Can you give us like amounts of how much tahini you put in? So we give it Any other day. amounts that you guys want to, to know, but other than the tahini? And the other things, yeah. So maybe the, the onion, the... So we put spoon yes. of onion. One spoon and onion? of tahini for one egg one. Okay. Some salt by the flavor. You see how, how much salt you like. Mm -hmm. Olive oil and smack on the Mm. Oh, amazing. I'm so excited that you like it. Yeah. And actually, the wine you have also is going to go very well with that. It's great. The Sirocco from Morocco, which is Thank another story. That. Enjoy. I hope you have something. Lechaim, everybody. Yes. Lechaim. So, so what, did your parent, what did your parents do in Israel when they, when they arrived with two little kids? When they arrived with two little kids. As I said before, they don't really know Hebrew, so they, they have know Hebrew. not much, very, yeah. very little. Yeah. Uh, they come from uh, Britain once also, the English also wasn't that good, no one was interested to know English over there. Yeah. I believe on this time in Israel also the English was uh, like a little bit, uh, no, 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 yeah. no, no very common. Mm -hmm. So, they start to walk. Uh, they come with knowledge. My mother was teacher for Santer. Piano teacher? Piano teacher. Okay. And my father was a mandes of Mateke. And they come and they find themselves walking. He was an engineer. He was an engineer. And yeah. they found themselves walking like a, just go to do something, you know. So what did he end up doing? Your, your dad? My mother and I have nothing to do with the piano teacher in Israel. And my yeah. father have nothing to do with the... So he started to work in a nature. We found a factory of a melon. Of a it's a cement. cement factory? Right. Very hard job, you know, just, yeah. uh, just go to keep doing something. Make ends meet. Right. Yeah. And uh, step by step, they go and make better and better and better. And uh, they, they, they was available to grow the kids nicely. Yeah. And they're happy about that. Yeah. Wow. So let's go to the next dish. Yeah. We have the, food, the egg that we cook for five minutes. We're gonna take them out to the ice water, okay. make them cold. It's very important to cook them for five minutes because we want them to be a little bit springy inside. So, Eli, yes. Sandra yes. asks if you can use other kinds of eggs for eggplants, like uh, the the skinny Japanese definitely, eggplants. Definitely, or... tell her that eggplant, tell it's a summer vegetable. Uh -huh. And on the summer, we can find this big and beautiful eggplant. But when the winter starts, the Japanese eggplant, they are the best for them. Because the In seeds, the winter, the Japanese are the best? For me, for my opinion, yes. Yeah. Because the seeds, they're very small and they're not bitter and they're not spicy. And for me, they are the best. Okay, that's so that's tip. our solution for to use the eggplant on the winter. You use Japanese? Right. Uh -huh. That's what we're doing. Okay. It's very nice. And even, even, even in the summertime, maybe at home, it's going to be more easy to use them because they are more skinny and they don't need too much time. Yeah. Uh, okay. And, and so pitot, I'll just... Uh, also, there was a question about the pitot from Samantha. So pitot are from Engine Bakery, which is an Israeli bakery. Now they have a, a bakery actually in New Jersey. So they supply the pita. They, right. We were talking about that earlier. In regular day, we're making them here. Right. Uh, she's making it, my wife. Oh, okay. She's the pastry chef. And, uh, I want to talk about she also soon. We're we, we <laughs> definitely going to need to do it because yeah. she's much more interested than me. So <laughs> we're going to need to stop and talk about it one yeah. point. Yeah. Uh, I'm going back to the Sabih. We have the eggplant that we cut okay. earlier. Yes. And Charlie, if you can please show them how the water comes out from the eggplant, and we, we again we want to waste this. We don't want this water, so we're gonna strain them, and we're gonna put them on the cornstarch that we also have on the recipe. But uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go. Okay, so explain what you're doing now. For okay, everybody. so we yes. have the eggplant for the sabir that we cut for big pubes. Now we we try to take much water out from them. Mm -hmm. We're gonna put them on the corn floor. The corn flour going to help us on the fry time to keep the eggplant not greasy, you know? Like we don't want the eggplant to be greasy. We want greasy. something greasy. Yeah. OK. 
okay. you want something to wrap them from outside. Keep it so the oil doesn't seep into the aircraft. Right, right, right. Okay. You no, know, like uh, in Oba, in Israel, we want to be healthy uh-huh. and enjoy the eggplant on the yeah. same time. Right. So we're putting the eggplant on the cornstarch. How much cornstarch did you put in it? Uh, just enough for to cover it. It's okay. no, it's no need to be too much. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And we're going to power the fire. Trying to take some uh, from the cold touch out. We are deep frying. Uh, this is only in deep frying. Can you do it? And you can do it without the flour on the oven with a little bit olive oil, yeah. which is also very nice. But uh, to be honest, I like the flavor of the oil. Yeah. So tonight we're gonna do it on the fryer. Okay. But yes, definitely you can you can slice the eggplant and put it on the oven with some olive oil. So if you today, didn't, yeah, if you didn't get that at home, you can, if you don't want to start deep frying, you can basically do the same thing in terms of cutting them and then put some olive oil on them right. and put them in a very hot oven for like 10 minutes, depends 10 minutes. how, how thin you slice it. Okay. But it's not too much. Mm-hmm. Very easy to do. About 10 minutes. Okay. Yes. So the, the eggplant's going to be on oil until we're going to get the nice color that we're looking for. Yeah. So we're going to push it a little bit. And, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so yeah, so maybe this is a good time to tell me how a kid from Poulon found himself in uh, New York. How a kid from Poulon yeah. found himself in New York. So we went back to my wife. Yes. Yeah, my wife was visiting in New York, in America. She actually had a nice trip here. Uh-huh. She was her sister with him, my father here. Okay. And she fell in love with New York. She really liked New York. And all the time, we was, uh, before we come to here, we was like three years together. And she all the time trying to explain. So wait, wait, wait. Let's, let's do a little bit of backtracking, okay? okay? Your wife, Shia. Shia. Yeah. Tell us maybe a little bit about Shia. She is, she is, she is uh, the more important person in my life. Uh, we, we, we just made it round right now before the pandemic. Oh yeah? On the beginning of Mazato. March. Thank you so much, thank you. So we just married and uh, we, we, we met in the, in the restaurant that we walked together, which is also very... So nice. you met in the kitchen? We met in the kitchen. She was yeah. the best chef and I was a sous chef, never someone. And we met, and we found love, and we are together all the Sounds like a fantastic, uh, you know, sort of movie. You're right. Yes. Let me tell you a secret. All the people who work in the restaurant, yeah. they met their wife on the restaurant because we have no enough time to walk out. So there's no other choice. There is no other choice. Unfortunately, no, no. But but yeah. Yeah. That's how it is on the restaurant business. But you've been working together for years now. Yeah. Ever since you met in that restaurant, this is in Herbert Samuel. This is an Herbert Samuel. After Herbert Samuel, we have a little bit of Herbert Samuel is an amazing restaurant in Tel Aviv, but sadly it doesn't exist anymore. Yes. Yeah. So after we work together in Herbert Samuel, uh, each one of us go to other beverage and she wants to learn different types of kitchen. So she go to work for uh, Chaim Cohen and Rafi Cohen, which they are also very mm-hmm. good and amazing chefs in Israel. Yeah. And I go to work with Jonathan Rochwell uh, in other projects that he did, and on one point also I go to work in uh, Kiev, which is also very interesting for six months. It was an amazing experience for me to see different kinds of uh, logistics, yeah. and, and uh, mm-hmm. it was everything so different from Israel, so yeah. it was yeah. also nice. Do you speak Russian any? Uh, actually, I speak five languages. Really? Yes, so because I come from Georgia, it's very common in Georgia to know Russian. Yeah. So yes, I do speak Russian, I speak Georgian, and uh-huh. I speak another language in Georgia, which is called Mengrel. Mengrel, it's the, that's... Yes, yeah. it's the one from the side of Abkhazia. Oh, wow. English and Hebrew. I'm trying to learn a little bit Spanish and French, and wow. I like languages. And, and when you know more than a tree, you feel like there is a connection between all the languages, wow. especially when you know Latin and English. Yeah. Tell me, if I'm uh, going on with the stories and you need to cut me off, no, no. To do cooking things, just tell me cut. We'll go to the cooking, we'll come back to the stories, okay? No problem. I hope you're all following uh, along back there at home. Um, 
So yes, we, yeah. we, we need like a three, four minutes to, to fry them and to yeah. get the nice color that we're looking for, it's more golden brown leaves. Mm -hmm. This color is also going to give us the, the texture that we're looking a little bit crispy. Okay. And, okay. Yeah, we're looking for that. Okay. Awesome. And for this dish, we're going to have potatoes okay. also. Right. But the potatoes, if we can, already don't use the fried for two things. We're going to use them. We're going to put them on the oven. Okay. okay. So it's nice chunks of potatoes. That we're putting on the oven on high temperature. So wait, but this now. potato you pre-cooked? This potato that yeah, I pre-cooked them and they, they just cooked. So how do you explain it to the yeah, plus how you cook how them. how I cook them? So mm -hmm. it's potato that I put on the oven for another like hour, 15 minutes under salt, and, and, and we lose a lot of juice from it. And we on salt? What do you mean on salt? On top of the salt, I take some kosher salt and I put the potato on the top. Oh, really? On okay. The oven for 15 minutes. It's a, uh, it's a very it's nice. Yes. And you you guys get that? So you put like on a bed, the potatoes go on a bed of kosher salt in an oven of like how many temperatures you would say? People cooking at home? Uh, about 450 if they can. 450 if they if the max. Okay. Yes. Uh, for about seven minutes, we want to get a little bit uh, charred and okay. nice, okay. nice color. Yes, here is our first one coming out. Okay. Charlie, you want to show them the, the eggplant, how, how it is when it's coming out? Yeah, yeah. so this is how it's look. A little bit golden brown and nice and crispy like you can. She is here. She, she's here? She's here. She say hi? She does. Oh. So nice. <laughs> now I'm all excited. You, yeah. you should keep it as a secret to the end. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know if to tell you, but I was like, oh. she wrote Woo! she wrote in to the chat, so she must want you to know no, that so she's excited. listening in. So excited. Yeah. So okay, so you and you and Sheila, she was she was the one who brought you over to New York. Yes. You're saying. Yes. She I wanted believe, a New York I adventure? You know, she, I still was in Israel working in one of the restaurants. If it wasn't for her, you would be in, in Israel still working in a restaurant. Right. Yeah. By the way, the beginning when she bring me, I say, like, she, what, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? It's take me a few, few months to, to fill up with New York, and now I'm crazy about it. You're crazy about New York? Wow. I love it a lot. Yeah. I feel like it's so special. Mm -hmm. And in the time we're talking, I'm feeling the eggs. Are we here for time? Okay. We're good with the time? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Okay. Well, are we getting close to putting together the sabich? Yes, we, we're okay. starting right now. Maybe, Eli, I'll ask you, I think something everybody at home is wondering also, how, how is this sort of time made for you? You're talking about the pandemic? Yeah, the about time, the, the pandemic, yeah. So it how's was the, very, very challenging and hard and difficult because there's so much question you're asking yourself. Like what I'm doing, I'm going to work, I'm putting myself on grease. And after when you're coming to work, all the kitchen starts to be like ghost kitchen because it's only a place that you make food and you're putting on the plastic container and you're sending out with the delivery guy. It's not like before you have people sitting, you're getting feedback, they're drinking wine, they're spending time, you put food at the music, you make the environment. It was so different. In the beginning, it's make us a little bit upset. So you really like, it. in cooking, you really like the interaction with the... Sure, there is a lot of energy around the restaurant that uh, that's, that's what makes you to feel so hard, to be so on it. Mm -hmm. Because you need something to, to, to make you want to do a crazy job like that. It is a crazy job, It huh? is a crazy job. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we're going okay. gonna to start to play the sabi. Mm -hmm. Which I mentioned before, uh, the most important thing is to have a lot of fresh thing around. Yeah. On the recipe that we 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 posted. Yes. We say that we're gonna need uh, some ingredient for that. Okay. I already pre-made them. It's a sliced onion, which is very simple. Okay, so you folks at home can. It's some uh, parsley leaves. Yeah, you see it, I guess, in the. It's some crushed tomato. Parsley leaves, crushed tomato. Yes, and. It's very, very simple. 
Okay. Yeah, those are pretty simple. Yeah. How do, you, how do you crush the tomato? You chop it or? On a micro blade. Grater? Grater. Yeah, grated. Yeah, grated. Grated tomato. Oh, okay. Yes. A hard right. boiled, a soft boiled egg. A soft boiled egg. I'm going to show you right now. That's, I'm going to cut them. That's completely peeled. You peeled the soft boiled egg. Yeah, yeah, right now. After we cook them, I, I peel them. and. Okay. So, yes, we have the crushed tomato, which is another uh, acidity and freshness to the dish. Mm -hmm. We have the egg one, which I put them already on the plate. This style, very, very, very simple. We have some tahini that we're gonna put on the plate. Because we, we believe tahini has to be with everything, even with Everything, yeah, everything. Tahina <laughs> is, it's, it's uh, yeah, I think it's, that's one of the most Israeli things. Wow, it's so Israeli. There's no meal without tahina. Without no way, yeah. no way. Sure. No way. We love it. Where do you, where do you get tahina here, by the way? Because that's, uh, so we get it from Israel. Oh, it's a tchina al bracha, al -bracha which we tchina. used to eat in Israel, and, and we, we're getting it right here in New York. Every it's time a, I go to Israel, I come back with, uh, like, uh, you know, as much al bracha tchina as I can manage to put in my suitcase. So, so next time talking to me, I'm going to get it for you, you know, I need to, <laughs> <laughs> to bring it all the way from Israel. Yeah. So yes, so we have the, the soft boiled egg that we mentioned before. We have some fresh onion. You put on the plate. We have some fresh jalapeno that we're gonna slice now for the freshness. Mm -hmm. And we in Israel like to eat a lot of spices. So. Yeah. Okay. We love it. How are you with the spicy? You like spicy? I love spicy. Personally, I'm it's, uh, crazy about spicy. Actually, it's for you, so you have to know ah, what's yeah. going on here. Yeah. How, how much we like spicy. And you know, I also have a question for the for, for our guests. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. If it's something that they make it from... What, like eggplants? Eggplant sabir or baba ganoush. Yeah, that's it, interesting. It was, what do you, what do you guys make at home with eggplants? was asking about the baba ganoush if it's with mayo. Because because a lot of people make it here with mayo. Right. Right. So yes. So so mm -hmm. I also want to ask the Belgian how they make it, how how they like to eat it. It's very interesting to me. I also gonna have a question for them. What they thought? They're only gonna be the one with the questions. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, so. So Eli, you're, you're from. I mean, you're like a Georgian Jew from Abkhazia. Right. Who sort of found himself in Israel because his parents took him there when he was a baby grew up with an Israeli identity yes and then sort of traveled the world and ended up in, in New York yes. what, what do you feel like you are sort of do, do you still have connections to Georgia like, what is your identity I do, do have you? connection to Georgia I have yeah. a grandma that she live in Georgia in Abkhazia still or? no 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 in Tbilisi in the capital yeah. yes. mm -hmm. uh, I don't think uh, the place you come from it's what you are I think what you are the way you're reacting to the things, I think it's the way that you choose to live your life. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's where you are. What you think, like where you are, it's what you are. That's what you think. No, no, not necessarily. I think it's very fluid. Good. Yes. yes. My opinion is as well. It's, mm -hmm. Yes. So this is the sabich. But it seems like you're very good at fitting in because you know I, I, the, the people back home don't know this, but like. You were just telling me that uh, three years ago you didn't know a word of English. Nothing, 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 nothing. I remember my first interview that she had to make for me a speech in Hebrew, what I have to say and, and yeah. how I get in my clothes and where is the fitting room. Yeah. And, and I was so stressed, uh -huh. which it's, I just walked Maybe inside to the restaurant and I was ready with all the speech and after they asked me, wait, well, why well, you have a beard? Yeah. And build, it's not something that she wait, was wait, explaining we'll, to me. <laughs> we'll get to the story of, uh, what is that, in uh, 11? 11 Madison Park. 11 Madison Park, that was your first sort of gig in New York. Right. Which is an amazing restaurant. It's For those amazing. who know, it's like a three, three Michelin star restaurant. But first, let's just uh, have a look at the final plate here. Yes, this is the final and plate. admire it for a second. <laughs> wow. So it's the crispy eggplant that we made. It's the soft egg, hard boiled egg. It's a tahini, crushed tomato, some onion, parsley, uh, some uh, jalapeno pepper. If anyone wants to add some mint, it also can go very well. Mm -hmm. We put on the top some 
olive oil and lemon juice to, yeah. to give a little bit more acidity and uh, flavor of the olive oil. Uh, mm -hmm. And please try it. Let this is Sabih, sort of a traditional Iraqi dish. Yes, Iraqi dish. Right. So I put it on the pita? On the... Yeah, you, you, yeah. Put it on the pita. Try to get a little bit from everything. Be careful, it's very hot. Mm -hmm. A piece of egg, everything together. All right. And enjoy it. Like simple, but so many flavors. So many flavors. At the same flavors. time. So many flavors. I agree with you. Yum. And try it with the egg. It's not that good taste. So tell us about your first job in New York. So we. Well, we have some, uh, huh? Lenny, who is five, I'm just going to read this one. Lenny, who is five, is watching and he wants to know. Sorry. Uh, yeah, and wants to know, sorry, and she wants to know if she can come to New York to eat at Bustan and meet Chef Bully after the virus is done. Sure, 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 yeah. sure. sure. We, we open right now as well. We're operating with the outside seating and the nice patio that we have on the back. Uh, on the time of the pandemic, we open another place on the east side, yeah. which is called Tamam, and it's Palafel uh, Vegan Italy. Very nice. Yeah. Which it was one of my dream when I say I'm coming to New York. I need to have a place of falafel. Falafel. So you opened the falafel place in the, in the pandemic, during the pandemic. Right, you opened right, the place right. like two months ago. Wow, you're and, great. And 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 wow. it also was very challenging because I'm sure I like to give to people and let them try and give someone try something in the pandemic time with the mask on the face. It's not easy, but we make them to try it and they like it. And yes, we have a lovely, nice, small. Uh, Shack on the east side, yes. Um, Jonathan says that they make your recipe for, they've made your recipe for years um, for Baba Ganoush. And Alan is actually asking something that I'm also wondering what, what happened to the potato? What happened to the potato? So yeah. actually, I forgot about the potato. Okay. But right now, we're going to have another bite with the potato. <laughs> okay. okay. Good, so we are excited. Good, good catch there, Alan. The potato. <laughs> wow. so, the potato is supposed to be in the baba ganu, in the sabih plate. In the sabih. So, so here is the potato. Okay. We put them uh, Sorry in the Sorry about that, oven. folks. It's hard, it. to, it's hard to tell stories and talk and cook after. Right, 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 right. We put them on the oven. We make them a little bit charred. Uh, for me, it's very remind me of Lak Bomer in Israel. Right. When we everybody eat this charred potato, and I feel like it's another texture that we need to have with the eggplant. So you hi, I'm gonna put here a few potatoes. You're gonna wait a few minutes. They're gonna get cold, and you're gonna try it. Okay. And let so these potatoes, folks, again, they were cooked on a bed of salt for about 15 minutes. We make them and dry then, and ready. And then Eli split them up into these sort of rough pieces. Yes. And he put them back in the oven, in a very hot oven, for another 10 minutes. Yes. All right. So if you can handle a dessert, or you welcome to go. If oh, you want to why, wait. Why would I call you? You tell us a lot yeah. about the 11th uh, Avenue. 11 Madison Park. 11 Madison Park. Gate, so, yeah. yeah, the 11 Madison Park. So, so you show up in New York, you don't know a word of English. Of, of English. But I know a lot about 11 Madison Park because it's one of the best restaurants in the world. And even two years before I come to here, I was so interested about that that I was sending them emails and no one was respond to me. Okay. And I say, I'm already in New York. I have to try another time. Yeah. So she and I will go to 11 minutes of park. And uh, the host, she give us the wrong uh, business card of young uh, sous chef, uh -huh. which I contact to him. And he say, of course, you're welcome to come, wow. even tomorrow. Uh -huh. So the, the, this person was inviting me. Uh, and I came. It was a beautiful experience. Yeah. They, they sent you to shave, you said, right? They, like, sent they you sent me to shave, yeah. I, uh -huh. I come with a deal. Uh -huh. And uh, the first thing uh -huh. the sous chef told me, he was like, what, what are you doing with the shave, with, with your beer? I didn't understand what he mean. And after he started to show me with the hand, and I understand that he wants me to shave. I said, OK, can I come tomorrow ready uh -huh. to walk after I uh, take out my beer? He said, no, you have 20 minutes. 
20 minutes to shave. Yes, so I walk out, I run to 7-Eleven, I buy a one-time... A oh, one-time razor? Right, and yeah. I go to, it was a bookstore next to it, and I go inside to the toilet and I cut myself very nice. <laughs> I come red like tomato and they all, everybody make fun of me and it was very funny. Yeah. And we start the, we start the interview. Yeah. And how is it to work in a, like... You don't know the language. Was, yes, you don't I don't know the language. Like, yeah. uh, there is uh, one uh, very important information that I forgot to say. Two nights ago, they got the best restaurant in the world in Australia. So uh-huh. the chef was in Australia. They got the best restaurant in the world. Yeah. And I came with no English. And it was... Uh, can I, I, I don't feel like I was missing the English too much because in the, in the kitchen there is another language that, that we can understand each other with the hands, with looking each other. So, so it was feeling like, okay, I, I can understand what they Once want. Once you got in the kitchen, you Once were... you got in the kitchen, you have the jacket on you, you, you're okay, you're good, you're ready. You know what to do. You know what to do, yeah. right. So um, the potatoes. Okay, I, the I, potatoes. I, I must And if you guys have any questions back there, we're close to wrapping up soon. Okay, so we'll take a little bit of the eggplant, potato, spicy pepper here. Wow. Oh. Amazing. You like it? I feel like I'm in Israel, really. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's the best feedback I can get. <laughs> When I getting this feedback on the restaurant on the falafel, I feel like okay, we 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 doing something good. These are these We're are tastes the right. that send me right back home, and I haven't tasted in a long time. So thank, thank you so, so much. much. Thank you. I'm happy yeah. about it. Um, what is the name and the location of the falafel restaurant? David so Leon. Was the name restaurant. of the falafel restaurant it's Tamam, and Tamam. it's located on. Tamam Lesson. is an Arabic word, by the way. Yes, it means, which is uh, it means all good. Yeah, thumbs up. Tamam. We, we're happy. Tamam. We don't missing something. Kif Khalik, how are you? Kulu Tamam. Kulu Tamam. Yes. All good. <laughs> sababa, like Sababa. Yeah, like yes. Sababa. <laughs> yeah. So it's a Sababa O2. Okay. <laughs> so Tamam. And it's located in uh, 1108 Lexington Avenue, uh-huh. which is on uh, 77th Street. Very nice place. Big end. There's uh-huh. no X, nothing like that. Kosher. Okay. Yep. Very nice. I love it. And how is it going opening a place in the pandemic? Is it uh, it's so surprising? It's so well, surprising. it's takeout, right? It's a good time for takeout. It's takeout, and we also have like two tables over there, which people sitting and give us nice feedback. And we're already thinking about the other location and other location. And it's going oh, yeah? very well. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You, you, you have to come to I know. visit. You're I know. inviting right. people from the Zoom, which they. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. you have to come. For sure, for sure. Do we have um, any more questions that I uh, would yeah. have to answer? Any more questions about the dishes? about Ellie, anything else? In the meantime, I just want to tell you folks, uh, first of all, it was really fun uh, cooking for you guys, especially for me, since I basically just got to <laughs> hang around with the chef privately cooking me these amazing eggplant dishes. And eggplant is basically the best thing in the world, in my opinion. You know, in all these conversations about if you could take any anything, to, if, you could, if you had to take one food, like a desert island, the island? always the eggplant. For me, it's always eggplant because you can make every anything from it. Um, so yeah, I wanted to just tell you guys that this is the first of a series that we're going to have together with you guys, and I hope you join me for our next event, which is going to be with our really good friend and amazing, amazing person, Edgar Keret. Um, Edgar, I, I grew up sort of admiring Edgar. I remember when I was in uh, uh, high school, he autographed uh, a book in like the book fair. For me, and I was so excited, and I had a copy of his book, and it said, "The Yochai Wow! Yeah, for Yochai, live. It's kind of a Hebrew a play on Hebrew words. Um, and then when we started Israel Story, we sort of uh, uh, in one of our very first episodes in Hebrew, actually, we told us we we brought a sort of radio rend- rendition, audio rendition of uh, a story by Edgar Keret, and we contacted him and asked his permission, and he was so nice and supportive. And that sort of turned into a blossom into a kind of a friendship or mentorship uh, of Edgar and us. And we've done a lot of stories together over the years. Um, and, I'm, and I'm really, it's always fun to talk with Edgar. He has, always has a very fresh and unique perspective on things. So I'm really excited to share with you some of the things that we've done with Edgar over the years. And also just 
talk to Edgar. I'm just excited to meet up and talk to Edgar, honestly. So that will be really cool. We're going to be doing that um, in our next meeting together. Um, where was the other restaurant you just mentioned, uh, Wendy? I'm going to say one more time, the, the Tamam. And tamam. Well, it's a... I'll just say we're in Bustan. Right now we're in Bustan, which is on Amsterdam and 83rd. 83rd. Yeah. And the other location is on Lexington Avenue and 77th. And uh, please come to, come to visit oh, and so. mention that uh, we know each other from the Zoom. Yeah. And say hi. We're all friends now. We're all we connected. All friends. Yeah. And again, if anyone have question about the dishes we make, feel comfortable to contact me on the Instagram. Anytime, any question, if anyone make it, I would love you to share with me and, and, and tag me and I'm going to see it and it's going to be very exciting for me. Mm -hmm. So again, it's Ellie Bully 12. Thank you so much. And thank you. Hi, All right. Yeah, this is great. It's so thank nice you. evening. Yeah. So Deb, we're going to pass it over to, to you. Thank you all so much for joining our program tonight. Please, I know you heard about Edgar Carrot coming for the next visit, but there are other wonderful programs this year as well, including the Fauda actor, Ala Daka. And you can go to jewishvirginia.org slash Israel today for more information and register there's so much that we can continue to learn and do even during COVID that is exciting and wonderful. Thank you so much to the wonderful work of the Federation and all of their partners who have made Israel Today possible. And we are celebrating 10 years. Thank you. Have a great night. <laughs>